Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, as promised, I said I was going to upload a second video, and here it is. So, let's get started. The save file I'll set right here, and let's get to it. If you remember last time, we crash-landed on planet Novalis, and we are now in search of a new ship. Because Ratchet apparently can't. Unknown reason. Alright, right off the bat, we got three ways we can go. We can go down into the town center, into like the waterworks area, and there's this little backwards path over here. And I'm going to go this way first because it's the quickest and there's something really important that we can pick up if we go this way. <laughs> uh, I'll get into the swimming controls later when we actually have to swim through somewhere. Right now, all that's down there are like one, like a single bolts, and that's not really worth it because you don't have any oxygen underwater, obviously. Uh, that right there is a bolt crank. If you press square, you'll latch onto it, and you will. And if you just spin the uh, control stick around in a circle, you will spin the crank, and it'll open doors. And later on in the game, it'll do all sorts of interesting stuff. Uh, so yeah, this is Novalis. It's um, definitely not my favorite level, but it's a nice, easy starting level, I guess, for new players. It's a, it's a bit more difficult than Velden was, obviously, because there's a bunch of new enemies, but other than that, it's not too difficult. Uh, okay, so swimming controls. Uh, if you press square, you can dive, and if you hold square, you'll dive deeper, and obviously X to go up. Uh, the little bubbles will drain over there, and that tells you how much air you have left uh, before you drown. And if you if the bubbles run out, it's an instant death. There's no, like, it drains your health slowly. It, you're, you're just dead. <clears throat> uh, in place of the alien frogs in this level, there's, like, these robotic bee-looking kind of things, but, uh... That's pretty much it for the enemy rundown, I think. Um, okay, before we spin the bolt crank, if you come over to this wall, you'll notice there's a crack in it. You throw a bomb at it, and right there we have our first gold bolt in the game. Gold bolts are usually surrounded by uh, giant stacks of boxes, so when you, whenever you find one, it's usually a good indication that you're also going to get quite a bit of regular money, too. So there's one out of 40, and uh, once we get a ship, the... Uh, when you select a planet on the planetary map that you want to go to, it'll show how many gold bolts you have per planet, so it's not like you have to wait to the end of the game to figure out what you still need. It, they're, it's all just right there, so you can just access it anytime if you go in the plan if you go in the ship. Another diving puzzle, and believe me, the swimming gets a lot more difficult in this game. Uh, I think around World Six or Seven, there's like this really long complicated swimming thing that you gotta do so yeah I might die on that one a couple times because that one's always giving me trouble but anyway now we are down in the main town area and it looks pretty beat up so Drek wasn't kidding I guess when he said he was gonna destroy the city so I guess we should see if we can salvage any parts or find at least a ship that we can use to get off this rock uh, like I said, the enemies in this level aren't really that difficult. They don't. They only fire in one straight direction, and uh, half the time they hit each other, so it makes your job a lot easier. Nanotech. Wow, that was extremely bad aim. Uh, these guys take uh, one, uh, two normal hits, but one common strike hit because it takes. It's a double. It does two damage instead of just one. Well, uh, that right there, that little antenna sticking out of the ground, is a sand mouse house, and once we get a item from a later world, we will be able to come back to that and wear that item, and a little sand mouse will come out, and he's kind of like a, he's kind of like a drone that goes with you for maybe like a couple minutes, and he'll just pretty much shoot any enemy that shows up, whether you see him or not. So it's kind of nice. I've never really understood that part of the game. I mean, like, yeah, they destroyed parts of the bridge, but it wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been easier to, like, just destroy the one middle part than instead of, like... I don't know. I know it's supposed to hinder you, but it doesn't really do its job. Either that or the pilot just has really bad aim. Pretty easy. Just use the bomb glove. Um... I'm gonna get 
I'm gonna try and get Navalis done in this episode. I'd really, because it's actually a pretty, sh it's a fun plan, but it's a pretty short one, and I don't want to spend too much time here, so maybe I'll go over a little bit on, maybe I'll go over a little bit instead of just going uh, the 15 minute mark. Because, um, yeah, it's a great planet, but it's one of those ones that you should be done with relatively quickly and not spending too much time on it. Here we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Well, let's just destroy these three. This is our cutscene. No oh, good, this one's got the subtitles. If you guys remember, this was the uh, representative from Navalis, I guess, in the last episode, and he was getting like beat up by Drex men or whatever. Has this ever happened to you? Hi, I'm Captain Quark, and believe me, there's nothing worse than staring down a Blargy and Snaggle Beast from the inside and knowing your equipment isn't functioning properly. That's why I come to Al's Robo Shack for all my electronic needs. Al has been the exclusive repair shop for my super electro gadgets since I was knee high to a sand mouse. If Al can't fix it, it's not broke. Right, Al? Ah. You said it, pal. So if you're fighting crime, or just fighting grime, <laughs> come to Al's RoboShack in Metropolis for all your robotic repairs. Al's RoboShack, it's quarktastic! Do you know what this means? Yeah, Captain Quark is really sold out. No, it means Captain Quark is on Metropolis. We could tell him about this invasion. If we had a ship. Uh, what? Uh, a ship? What? You're not going to torture me? Well, this planetary chairman, I could arrange... He's not a representative, he's the planetary chairman, so I guess that's like their leader, or something or other. Okay, and this is just explaining what that little uh, robot with a TV screen was. Uh, that's an infobot, and there's usually usually one on every world. There's some that don't have one, but uh, they just give you coordinates to new planets so you can go there. Uh, but now, our main problem is solved, we have a ship. It's not the coolest looking ship, I like the blue one better, but unfortunately we crashed it. But before we go anywhere else, we still have to traverse the waterworks. Actually, it's actually a pretty well put together. Pretty well put together game. Sorry, uh, the programmers did a pretty good job, except for the fact of putting the subtitles over some of the cutscenes, which I'm still angry about. I'm pretty sure they fixed that in later games, hopefully, because I'm planning on doing at least the first four. And if I get the PS3, I'll probably do the future series, because um, I've actually never played the future ones, and I kind of want to. So. It'd be fun to do a couple playthroughs of their action click. Obviously not all right in a row, because um, there's other bunch of other stuff I want to do. Some Nintendo stuff, some stuff on the Xbox. 
other PlayStation 2 games like that. So they won't all just be one. And I'm planning on doing some of the Sly and uh, Jack and Daxter series. Uh, it's kind of like the other two like uh, title grabbers for the PlayStation or Sony, I would say. I don't really know what you'd call them. But anyway, here's one of the coolest uh, characters in the game. He doesn't have many appearances, but he's usually in each one, and he has a little wisdom. Except in this one. He's not really... Helpful. So why aren't you on one? Socioeconomic disparity. What? He hasn't got enough volts. Working Never understood what that meant until probably three years ago. I'm not the smartest. I got this thing shows two weirdos ditching their ship. It's got coordinates to a desert planet, too. An info bot. Ratchet, we could use that. Okay, so yeah, and sometimes you won't just find them, sometimes you'll have to buy them, the Infobots. So, like in this case, it's only 500, but they will get more expensive as time goes on. Uh, that little help desk message that popped up, if you press L1, like I said, you can view look around mode. And you can also use your weapons, so you can press circle and throw a bomb. Or you can press R1 and this, oh, whoops. You press square and you can throw your wrench, but if you press R1, press R1, there we go. You can get this little crosshair up, and that's where your wrench will go. It's kind of a neat little factor they put into the game. But anyway, let's buy this info bot, and this is pretty much it for Novalis, except for that last gold bolt. But, um, wait, like I said, we won't be able to get that till we have an item from way later. So. <clears throat> mayday, Mayday! This is the solar ship Radical. We seem to be under attack from the planet's surface. Relax, kid. It looks like some sort of fireworks display. Probably in your honor. Whoa! That was close! Ah! Pipe right down, I can't concentrate. Well, we've been hit! Uh, an unexpected detour. When we land, I'll see if I can scare up an exhibition for you. We're not gonna live that long! Kid, let's am scream! Eject! Eject! Close call. Did you see that guy on the left? That was Skid McMarks. Does he know Captain Quark? I doubt it. He's a pro hoverboarder, always going off about how cool he is. Looks like he's in trouble. <laughs> I'll say. I've never seen him look so freaked out. Well, there's your form of like a surfer dude in this game. I guess he kind of had like the psychedelic T-shirt going on and. Got like the standard accent. But anyway, we're gonna follow in the plumber's footsteps and slide down this sewer pipe. That's kinda like how the bolts flow, like they overshoot you and then they have to circle back around. It's kind of a neat little factor they put in. But anyway, before we move on, we are going to get a new weapon. And this as far as I know, this is the only game that has any kind of weapon the the only Ratchet and Clank game that has any sort of weapon like this. It's basically like your standard flamethrower. It's actually a really neat weapon. I really like this one. The Parasitor. So basically it's a flamethrower. If you tap circle, it shoots out, the, shoots out a flame. But if you hold circle, you can run around and spray it. And in a... Uh, actually, the infobot we just got for Planet Iridia will be using that quite a bit. But before we go there, we're going to go to Kirwan because... There is something there that is extremely helpful. And uh, like I said, it does show the gold bolts, so I'll check Novalis quick. Yeah, that was right. There only was three. And like I said, the other one we won't get for a while. But anyway, I think I'm going to blast off to Kirwan and then probably end the episode there because I think I'm getting up on time. So let's do it. <laughs> 